can spend our days bawling about the relentless rise in interest rates that keep making the stock market melt down, or we can search for interesting opportunities because this sell is creating a lot of them. Consider the case of Oshkosh Corporation, which makes special purpose vehicles and equipment for construction, defense, airports, and local governments. At the beginning of August, Oshkosh reported a remarkably strong quarter, just a massive earnings beat, with management raising their full year earnings forecast from $6 all the way up to 8 bucks. In response, the stock jumped 10% that day from 92 to north of 101, then it ran all the way to 106 at the highs a little over a month ago. As we know, the market's turned negative since then. Oshkosh has given back nearly all those post earnings gains, with the stock slipping to 93 and change today. You're getting that magnificent beat and raise quarter for almost free. Don't take it from me. Let's dig deep with John Pfeiffer. He is the president and CEO of Oshkosh, who's here with his company's new ERCV. That's Electric Refuse Collection Vehicle, the latest in a long line of purpose-built electric vehicles like fire trucks that we saw before, postal service, vans. Mr. Mr. Pfeiffer, I am very excited to see you back on Van Buddy. Yeah. It's Good to great see you, to be sir. here, Jim. All right, so let's, uh, I want to talk to you about so many of these things, but behind you is maybe one of the most beautiful, looks like a museum piece, but it's not. It's a real truck. Yeah. Why is it so important that the refuse companies buy your trucks? Yeah, so this vehicle that you see today, this is the ne next in a long line of electric vehicles we've been bringing out in every market we serve. This is a really important vehicle. This is a this is a real product. This is a sellable unit. This one, we, yeah, this one right here. We All just right. announced a, an order with Republic Services, Company. great customer of ours. We'll start supplying them this year, and then of course a lot more next year. This is a revolutionary vehicle because not only is it fully electric zero emission. We all know the dangers of diesel particulate in our communities. Nobody wants it. This takes all that out, makes it perfectly silent. But this, the, the thing that's so revolutionary about this vehicle, first time there's ever been a fully integrated environmental services vehicle developed. What that means is it's not a third-party chassis with a body slapped on right. the back right. that's not built. optimized right. for the vocation that's being done. This is optimizing for the vocation. The driver's comfortable in this vehicle. It's laid out for them to be ultimately productive and really, really safe. They've never had that in the industry. It's going to drive a lot of improvement. And again, it's clean. And I would imagine uh, in Europe they know the importance of not having diesel. Yeah. What happens if we adopt the European laws? Well, our communities will get cleaner for sure if we're going to continue to go to electric vehicles that are in our cities. Uh, I think that that's probably pretty clear to everybody. All right, so John, last uh, time we saw you, you had an electric fire truck. Yeah. Any uptick there? Take absolutely. We're we're building more. We go well, now. We release that for sale in 2024. Right. But we've got them in Gilbert, Arizona. We've got them in Portland, Oregon. We've got them in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, those customers are 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 basically taking the validation units and giving us feedback on it. It's going extremely well. You're going to see electric uh, municipal fire trucks in communities come online year over year over year starting next year again something we want because yep. they idle in front of fires now we yep. want them to preserve obviously firefighters job is paramount to save lives but we don't want dirty fire trucks right. nor do we want dirty post office trucks right we do not yeah and what's going on there so the postal you know we we've got the contract to replace the entire fleet of postal vehicles these are the delivery vehicles that the postal carriers use every day they come by everybody's house and business every single day those are 75 percent of what we supply will be electric vehicles starting from 2024. now the government recently changed they put three billion dollars toward electric so yeah. that's got to play into your hands too yeah. yeah it was great for us the first time congress has ever appropriated money for the united states postal service and they did it so that they could electrify the fleet faster so it gave the Postal Service the ability to put charging infrastructure in place more quickly and order more battery electric versus internal combustion units. That's why I say they'll have 75% of the, of the first order be electric. Is there a way that we can speed up charging time? Um, well, that's not our area of expertise, right. but we do, we do a lot of work with charging software. And okay. optimizing the charging management of a battery is really critical to the life of the battery. So this battery is designed to last for the entire life of the truck. You don't have to replace the battery. That's done through battery manage, charging management software. You never want the battery to get depleted too much. Right. You also don't want to overcharge it. You have to do that with software to make sure you're going to get the best life and the best efficiency out of that battery. All right. Now, I don't, I like to stay with electric, but I was so 
so impressed by since I've seen you this Aerotech acquisition yeah. because there's tremendous demand for that. Yeah. Another great place yeah. to be. Yeah, Aerotech, great acquisition for us. We made the acquisition, closed on it 60 days ago. Um, this is right in our wheelhouse. It's all purpose built vehicles for people who do tough work. And where is everybody investing today? in capacity for airports and to, su to support airlines. If you listen to all the CEOs of the airlines, the heads of the airports around the world, they all need more capacity. Right. We give them the ability to put more capacity in because we do jet, uh, jet bridges, we do all the ground service equipment at an airport. We have the technology to electrify it. We've got the technology to make to do autonomous functionality for that equipment to drive more productive uh, operation at an airport. And then one last one, uh, JLG, obviously yeah. doing incredibly well. JLG is doing into ag. These, It's just another yeah. fantastic acquisition. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, JLG doing extremely well. The demand for JLG is fantastic. Looking forward into the future. Well, I got to tell you, you just seem to just hit it exactly where it is going to go. And that's one of the reasons why your company is doing so, so well. All I can tell you, sir, is, is that that's a thing of beauty. And you and I should go on a ride right after. I understand you took it right over the bridge. Yeah, we we should go right back and enjoy it ourselves. a couple hours ago, yeah. John Pfeiffer is the CEO of Oshkosh Corporation. Great quarter, of course, because they've got the right things to sell. Mad Money's back in the break.